If once you have slept on an island, you'll never be quite the same. You may look as you looked the day before and go by the same old name. You may bustle about in the street and shop. You may sit at home and sew, but you'll see blue water and wheeling gulls wherever your feet may go. You may chat with the neighbors of this and that and close to your fire keep, but you'll hear the ship whistle and the lighthouse bell and the tides beat through your sleep. Oh, you won't know why and you can't say how such a change upon you came. But once you have slept on an island, you'll never be quite the same. Last week on Safi Sprocket, I travelled over 360 miles from North Wales to Fort William in one day in order to begin the epic adventure of partaking in the infamous NC500 route. However, after so many hours on the road and one inedible meal, even the strongest of Sprockets succumbed to sleep, even if that did occur in a lay-by. Right, oh. Up the mountain we go. So we are currently on the road to Apple Cross, which is very, very exciting. And look at these hills, guys. Holy moly. They're so huge. Hey, well, I am very, very, very glad that I uh, <laughs> filled up with fuel before heading off. It most certainly looks prehistoric traveling through here, doesn't it? <laughs> I feel like the camera is just not going to do it any justice whatsoever. You know, I was contemplating skipping this road and going straight to Ool, I think it was like Ula Pool or something like that. I don't know what a strange name. And just like skipping Apple Cross because I just kept worrying about being behind schedule. And then I thought, you know what? I'm here to enjoy the North Coast 500. If I don't get to do the end of it, I, it's not going to be the end of the world. So I decided just to carry on and uh, do the first leg of the route. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, what is this? What is this? Oh. Well, this is not terrifying at all. <laughs> oh my god, this is like Stelvio Pass. I tell you what, I was so concerned about getting a bigger bike, thinking it would be like harder to corner. And I swear down, this is so much easier. I don't know how, it doesn't make any sense in my brain. I'm probably sure that people who understand bikes know it makes sense. But I honestly thought like having a big, bigger, heavier bike was gonna be like a lot more hard work. But it's actually, weirdly enough, a lot easier. <laughs> It just seems to go at low speeds, like so much, like, ah, oh, it just pulls. It's like a little tractor. Tractor Tom. As I made my way up to the top of the hill, I successfully managed to run into a female rider who was just as insane as I was, and so our conversation just consisted of the pair of us screaming at each other whilst her husband looked a little confused. Yo, I like I'm so jealous. Do you have a bike license? I'm so strong. 
I know. I like when I drop it, I have to like take everything off just to be like. The conversation was only interrupted by the sound of a motorcycle exploding up the hill, followed by a convoy of friends to roast the rider. I did offer to lend a hand, however, he simply got off his motorcycle and then proceeded to fix my wonky mirror with a bag of spanners that he happened to be carrying around. Quite a long time, and that's without the bike. As I continued on with my journey with a newly repaired bike, courtesy of Del Boy and his band of merry men, the weather was really starting to pick up. I was in high spirits and I was content with my decision to head up to Scotland for my annual break. I made my way from Applecross along the A896 towards Poolwee, meandering through the twists, the turns, and along the scenic ocean roads, admiring of what I could only describe as one of the most beautiful routes I have ever had the luxury of riding. However, my enjoyment became somewhat short-lived as I headed more inland. The rain became heavier and heavier until I inevitably needed to pull over. The road is very steep. <laughs> I think we're climbing the mountains a little bit more. So the roads have started to flood. The rain has got really, really heavy. I had to stop so I could try and cover my sleeping bag because my sleeping bag is now soaked through. My gloves are soaked through. My helmet is also soaked through. My uh, tank bag, likewise. <laughs> oh dear. I'm about an hour away from Ula Pool. What a disaster. What a disaster. And to top it off, to top it off, I have just stopped at a visitor center, which happened to be closed. And so I ended up peeing in a puddle because I was that desperate. <laughs> Dear. It's absolutely soaked. I suppose the longer I'm going to leave it, the worse it's going to get. And the midges are fighting me. Okay, okay, let's get on the bike. Let's do this. Everything's soaking.
madness we go. Oh, this is awful. Keeping an eye on my uh, GoPro time on the front. <laughs> I'm going to have to check Google Maps when I arrive. Find out what I did. Where I went wrong. The clock struck 10pm and I knew that it was just simply too late to carry on riding. I inevitably gave up and decided just to fall asleep again in a lay-by. Once again caught in the situation where I was physically exhausted and mentally ready to sleep straight on the ground underneath the open sky. Not only was I worn out but I'd also run out of clean drinking water. However at this point in my journey I doubt it would have made any difference. I was tired, I was grumpy and most of all I was annoyed that my body had given up before reaching the marker on the map that I had set for myself. fault.